So, um, well, welcome everyone. Uh, my name is uh, Sandra Franco, and I am a postdoctoral research scientist at Columbia University, and also an ASA Bio uh, Fellow. And well, this month's community call, as you know, will be focused on, on using preprints in journal clubs. And I just want to remind everyone that this call is being uh, recorded. So, um, yeah, so this is the agenda for today's uh, community call. It actually has shared it also in the, in the chat. So first of all, we're gonna very quickly review uh, which do we think are the benefits of including preprints in journal clubs. And then we will have uh, Daniela Saderi, which is uh, the co-founder and director of pre-review. And she's gonna talk about the pre-review platform and how it helps scientists to organize preprint journal clubs. Then we are gonna have uh, Fabio Palmieri, who is also an ASA Bio uh, fellow. And he will, he will share with us his experience setting up a preprint journal club at his institution. And finally, uh, Sara Llorente Armijo will give us an, an insider's point of view of a participant in this kind of, uh, of journal clubs. So just as a heads up, um, today's community call has been organized by the, um, as part of the ASAP Bio uh, Fellows. So our group of uh, fellows is interested in, in the role of, uh, in promoting the adoption of preprints in journal clubs. Uh, for such, we have been working uh, these past six months to raise awareness about the, the potential use of preprints in journal clubs, the benefits of including uh, this kind of scientific output in, uh, in journal clubs. And we have been trying to help others start their own uh, preprint journal clubs at the institutions. So um, let's get started, right? So which, which are the benefits that we think as a, like as a group that uh, including preprints uh, in traditional journal clubs have? So first of all, it helped the authors um, strengthen their work. So instead of focusing uh, on a paper that has been already uh, peer reviewed and published, including uh, preprint in, in journal clubs provides uh, the authors with the opportunity to receive feedback before it is uh, kind of too late. So they still have time to, to or there is a still opportunity for revision. And actually a recent survey um, performed or conducted by BioArchive has shown that uh, like um, one of the main reasons why authors post their uh, manuscripts in service such as BioArchive is because they want to receive feedback. So, and there's also a couple of, uh, well, I guess it's not just a couple, but we, we have been able to find uh, two, three uh, very nice success stories of uh, authors uh, being really happy about the feedback they receive uh, on their, on their preprints. Um, then second, uh, it allows us to discuss uh, the science as it happens. So preprints are uh, more often the most common form of scientific uh, information since they are deposited before the, the article is uh, published. And as you know, publication uh, of a manuscript takes a lot of time. So uh, using preprints in journal clubs uh, ensures that we are discussing the latest science that is out there. And I think that this situation that is depicted uh, here exemplifies very well how preprints uh, actually represent the latest scientific output. So here, three, um, three independent labs were working on, on similar projects. And instead of, uh, you know, like trying to rush the publication and compete with each other, they posted their uh, preprints on uh, BioArchive and then uh, submitted together to the same uh, journal. And this was possible because uh, they, they were able, since they, were, uh, since they posted their preprints in, in, on BioArchive, they were able to know that others were also working on the same. Uh, project. Then it also helps raise your and your group's uh, profile. So the fact that the reviews can be posted publicly uh, means that you can get also more visibility uh, as a reviewer. And uh, also this is an excellent opportunity for early career researchers to get introduced in the peer review system. 
Also, there is no restrictions on papers to include. So um, data from 2016 shows that only 12% of newly published papers are freely accessible online. I don't know, maybe this has changed over the years. Uh, but uh, this clearly means that uh, most of there is a still a huge percentage of research that is uh, hidden behind a paywall. And in this map, uh, this map shows uh, the some of the countries that um, that download the most um, papers from this uh, C-Hub platform, uh, probably uh, showing that they don't have the means or the access to uh, some of the papers that they are downloading. So using uh, preprints. This is a free and open access means of disseminating results so that the outputs are available to the whole scientific community, irrespective of whether uh, the country or the institution has the means uh, or can afford journal publication or subscription fees. So using preprint in journal clubs ensures that everyone can participate in the discussion and everyone can have uh, access to the, to the papers. And finally, we think that it helps us to focus on the, on the science. So commenting on preprints by early career researchers is an opportunity for them to sharpen their reviewing uh, skills and also to give them a voice in the academic uh, publishing. And platforms such as pre-review, which we are going to hear a little bit more in just uh, a minute, or periodicals or uh, peer community facilitate this voluntary peer review. Moreover, since preprints haven't been um, peer reviewed yet, there is no assumption of the quality of the science based on uh, the perceived impact or the journal or the specific uh, journal scope. So this is, uh, these are the five benefits that uh, we think that using preprints in, in journal clubs have. And I just want to, um, to give the, the microphone to, to Daniela. Uh, as I said, uh, she's the co-founder and director of Pre-Review, and she's going to talk a little bit more on how you can start your own Pre-Print Journal Club. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much, uh, uh, Sandra and everybody, and Etabayo for organizing this community call. Uh, I didn't actually uh, put much here about uh, the platform and pre-review, but I'm going to give a little bit of hints uh, here and there. One thing that I want to say before I um, that you reminded me as you were going through the benefits uh, is, and you know, just sharing a tiny bit of, of my experience in um, in 2016 when I joined OpenCon was really when the was the, the first time that I was exposed to what preprints were, and I still have very clear in mind Jessica Polka up there shining uh, on, like telling everybody about pre pre preprints. And I came back to my institution, I was like, why aren't we doing this in journal clubs? That was like, what actually um, made uh, Sam Hindle and myself uh, co-found pre-review in, in 2017 was this desire to um, uh, help other researchers, especially early career researchers, start uh, their own journal clubs. And so uh, this presentation and a lot of what pre-review has done uh, since then has been a huge collaborative game contributions. And obviously Sam Hindel and Monica Granados at pre-review and this whole community that inspired us. So yeah, thanks again for having us. Um, so ooh, um, I forgot that I don't have control of the slides. Thank you. <laughs> Um, so the what we are going to have here is just like uh, 10 tips that we think are going to be helpful to um, uh, start your own uh, preprint journal club and it's really based on our experience and uh, I have full disclosure these slides were made uh, before the COVID-19 preprint so a lot of uh, this um, organization of these journal clubs is probably going to be virtual and we're going to have a little bit of that um, at some point as well but the number one thing is that you need to find your community. And so if um, we gave this like three titles, so you can be uh, a quote unquote opportunist. And what that means is that you um, are already part of a journal club. And this is actually what happened to me. Uh, and I just uh, decided when it came my turn, I was like, hey, instead of presenting an already uh, published um, uh, in a traditional way, uh, uh, published uh, article that cannot be changed, we're gonna talk about a preprint. Um, and at the time, nobody actually in my lab knew what preprints were or, um, and so it was also an opportunity to introduce a little bit about uh, just the value of preprints in general. But you can also go in, oh, I'm still, uh, yeah, thank you. And be a revolutionist and join um, a journal club um, if you're not part, part of it already and try to convert uh, it to being a preprint journal club altogether. So, um, 
medically, especially if you're leading, this is quite easy. It's a little bit easier. You can just say like, this is the preprint club and invite everybody who presents to uh, actually use a preprint instead. And the pioneer is that you actually start, uh, start your own. And uh, this is like, um, I think my, my favorite, because I think if you're not already part of a general club and if the, the department doesn't have a general club, it's a great opportunity to uh, start having even more discussions with um, your peers. Of course, again, this is uh, pre-pandemic, but we're going to see how you can do this online and even include a larger community. And point number two is, um, you know, you going to find your preprint. Uh, I believe a lot of people uh, here already know where to find preprints, but um, as a bio put together a great list of uh, preprint servers so with uh, all the policies. Um, and so uh, all, uh, this, some of these links, I don't know why the color got kind of uh, reverted here, but it's fine. Um, a lot of these things underlined are actually links. And if the presentation is posted online, um, they're uh, obviously hopefully going to work. Uh, European C also um, has started um, uh, linking uh, or um, uh, presenting all the um, uh, me uh, metadata and sometimes even like a full text uh, PDF of COVID-19 related preprints. And so you can find preprints there on uh, pre-review and our break science rapid preview, which for now are two separate platforms. But spoiler alert, we are about to launch a combined version of this platform. Um, as also, um, it gives you also the possibility to like uh, check out um, preprints that have been already uh, um, uh, reviewed or, who, or for which they have requests for review. And you yourself can go in and request the community review of one preprint. So you can use that platform also to find some content that you want to add uh, reviews to. Um, and you can also set up notifications. I believe, I know Biarchive for sure has that um, uh, possibility and I believe MedArchive might have that as well. Um, I'm not sure about other preprint servers. Uh, and also social media is a great way um, nowadays to find new content. So if you follow the uh, preprint hashtag or the hashtag of the preprint server, you can find uh, new content that kind of is updated and discussed. And number three, is um, you gotta be uh, a little bit prepared. Uh, what I found uh, the different main difference between a traditional journal club and a preprint journal club in which you actually want with the goal of creating a review uh, is that you need a, a preparation that is a little bit different. So in a traditional journal club, at least what I was used to is that I would come and show the figures and present the paper and it would be everybody else is just listening. I think that the beauty of a preprint journal club, if you set it up this way, is that it makes it more particip participatory from everybody else. And so we um, recommend using a, a collaborative note uh, document. You can even use, set up your own hypothesis um, annotation system on that annotates on the PDF and you can create a group. Uh, I'm happy to um, uh, point to some of these uh, resources, but in general, having something in which I mean, everybody can have access to, and uh, it, it also works much better if you already have set up some questions so that during, as you go through the preprint, you can take notes about um, other people's comment, and that will help you immensely when you try to put together the review um, at the end. Um, and so really preparation is key. And if you share this document ahead of time, um, I think a 10% of your participants might actually read it, which is a very useful so that they can prepare with their answers. Uh, four is um, it, it, on, on, on this note of taking notes, it's actually very helpful to be working pairs. And so um, what, I, um, what I was trying to do is that instead of having a calendar with like every week one person that would present, we're trying to have a couple of people who were responsible for that presentation so that one would be the host, um, the guys the discussion, and the scribe is like dedicated to actually taking notes and capture some of the uh, comments from the uh, other participants. That's very helpful in the end. Number five um, is one of the most important one just set the tone as the host to keep the discussion constructive. I don't know your experience, but sometimes I've been in journal clubs in which the goal seemed to be to shut down, <laughs> to, to really like attack the article, no matter where it was published and just show how wrong everything was. So um, there is no fault in showing, uh, in giving negative feedback as long as it is constructive. If you have you know, a comment that a statistical analysis is not appropriate, 
Um, I think it is very important to point it out because that's what peer review is for. But we needed to, to do it in a way that could be useful uh, and constructive. And, and there are some resources that we're going to share uh, that I think are really, really helpful to um, highlight some language that can help communicate the same exact concept, but in a way that the author actually can find helpful. Uh, the code of conduct is also pretty important and uh, definitely setting up the, um, uh, the tone so that you know, we all want to be, uh, we wanted to create a, a, an environment in which everyone is um, uh, welcome to express obviously their, their opinion. Um, and um, also one of the most important thing, I think it's sometimes you have some people that are more keen to speaking and other people that are more shy. I was definitely one of those that spoke the most and I had to really check constantly myself to give other people the chance to speak. Um, I also speak very fast. Um, and so if you're the host, try to highlight this, uh, um, these things and so that everybody can be um, uh, feel like they have a space to voice their opinion. And so number six, um, I don't remember what it is. So if you go forward, <laughs> yes, thank you. Um, it's actually write the review. So once you have uh, uh, collected all these notes and the more notes you have, the easier this will be. Um, uh, you and maybe the other, your, um, your uh, quote unquote part, peer review, you know, pre review partner or peer review partner, uh, you can uh, put together the review. And um, the authors of this review could be just like you, it could be like others, um, the whole group of journal club, uh, it doesn't really matter, but it is important to identify, if, especially if you plan to publish this or to post it online, that you ask um, a permission to share their names. Uh, and uh, if they want to actually be the authors themselves and have that listed, in, for instance, in their profile, if you choose free review as a platform. Um, obviously, keep it constructive when you write a review. Uh, again, again, we're going to see some tips. Um, and keep it simple is pretty important. I, um, it is very hard for me to, to do that that way. Sometimes I like get caught up in like long uh, discussions. And I think especially if you um, want to uh, have, be this, like, useful to the author, I think uh, not going into many tangents might be um, helpful. That's, that was feedback that I got from my reviews. Um, and uh, yeah, with these are links to some tips and templates. We actually, um, uh, we will update that soon, but uh, on pre-review you can find some resources for that. And one of my favorite is definitely, still is the PLOS Peer Reviewer Center. Um, I really encourage everybody to check it out. And they just launched a new uh, version of that, that also, not new version, but like an additional um, center for how to write an article, which is also very important and useful. And number seven, um, is so now is that you have to decide where to share your review or if you want to share it. Uh, I we really encourage you to share it because, as uh, Sandra was saying, that's like part of building your profile. And in a week, we're gonna um, discuss at the SA Bio Design uh, Sprint uh, how to build more incentives because honestly, they're not very they're not enough. But I really believe that they will be. Uh, even top down in a few years. So you might as well just get to it and start getting your experience and, and uh, feet wet in uh, reviewing for prints. And uh, see if you, again, the current platform is completely honestly, like kind of a little buggy on pre-review.org. Uh, so we are very excited to launch our new one and we'll have collaborative writing uh, features and all of that. So I'm hoping that uh, that will help this process. But there are other places in which you can put your review. As I mentioned, Peer Community In, you can become a pre-lighter um, uh, or you can look at Pub Peer. There are other places. So definitely uh, check it out. Um, and you can also put it on your lab page and blog. Um, or if you don't want to put it out, I still think it's useful, which is what I used to do at the very beginning to email it to the author. And quote from, or anecdote from my experience, um, I actually got two postdocs offers for, from PIs uh, for which I had you know, reviewed the preprint as a PhD a student and they came to my poster in a conference and like, thank you so much, that was so useful. And it wasn't just my review, it was a review of the whole journal club. So I really think that from my personal experience, I know too, um, that was really good for my career as well. Uh, I didn't actually get the PhD, uh, the postdoc, because I decided to work on pre-review, but it was a really good offer. So, <laughs> all right, number eight. Um, yes, practice makes it perfect. So don't, don't do one and then like, 
okay, you know, uh, next year, um, which I mean, better than nothing, but it is very helpful if you can keep this up because again, it will help building your profile, it will help building your skills as a reviewer and build uh, your network. So review regularly is, um, is pretty helpful. Uh, what I uh, didn't mention when I, um, before when I was looking at the um, pre-review, I said that it's gonna be a new platform coming up and um, the, the review is gonna have, it's gonna be a combination of a rapid review, kind of like what it is on Outbreak, uh, Outbreak Science Rapid Review right now and the longer full version. So hopefully this will also give the opportunity to um, like answer some quick questions that can um, then help others give a quick assessment of that preprint. Um, just hopefully, you know, uh, you'll see as, as it comes on. We are pretty excited about that future. Um, and then participate to peer review events. Um, there have been one, a great one organized by SSI in September. Hopefully there will be more, uh, but those are great opportunities to also get um, uh, started on uh, the journal club. And then nine, I'm almost done. Uh, yes, so <laughs> this was number nine. I think this should be number one now. But um, even before the pandemic, we uh, were doing this like what we call live stream preprint journal club. We have done a few with a collaboration with PLOS, eLife, and Jamir Publications, and also with you all, um, communities that just emailed us to uh, help facilitate these events. And these are really great. This is a picture, a screenshot from one of the very first one. And Jessica is right there. You can see other familiar faces. Uh, but they're really, really fun. Um, and we, um, in the resources that I um, link to in the next slide, there is also like the template that we use during this uh, calls. And it's, you can copy, make a copy and make it your own. Um, and I think it's quite useful to just, uh, as I mentioned in tip number, I don't remember four, maybe you know, two, it is useful to have this like document that you can follow through the discussion. And 10, is the resources. <laughs> so um, these are um, hopefully links um, that work. I'm not sure why they're, they look a little bit different, but I, um, uh, I'm also going to share on um, the pre-review uh, Twitter account at the end of this discussion, um, the, the full presentation. So you can find uh, some of these links available there. And feel free to um, direct message me at neurosarda on Twitter or email me, daniela at pre-review.org if you have questions. And uh, yeah, I guess that's it. So I, if you have questions or comments, uh, I'm going to be here for another 10 minutes and I can either answer directly um, by Ellen Boyce or on the chat. Thank you. Thank you, Daniela. Um, let me check. Uh, OK. Yeah, maybe we can go to the next speaker. I forgot about this one. This is a great picture from a, a loud journal club pre-COVID in uh, Brazil. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good. I have a small question. Um, have you find uh, some sort of opposition? Like when you have tried maybe to introduce a uh, preprints, maybe earlier when you were uh, like doing your PhD, have you find any sort of opposition from people? Um, and how might have or not? <laughs> uh, I mean, in my experience, um, I mean, nobody minded. Uh, and actually, now, like my my lab, I mean, I was very lucky. My PI um, is um, it was already like very you know forward thinking and immediately like embraced uh, this. We didn't. Not everybody always discussed preprints, but it was. Um, I always got the support that I that I felt I needed. Um, I uh, remember also like at one of the uh, auditory meeting that I was participating, I just like, um, I, I set up like a table on the side and just like started talking about preprint journal class. <laughs> so scientists, they were like, is this a poster? I was like, no, but let me tell you. And, and so like, I, I always got the, the, my department to help. But again, I think um, it, it is not everybody like, you know, initially was like, what are these preprints? I think it's still a little bit easier right now to make that, um, yeah, people know about more about preprints, but uh, again, I, I think in my experience, I, I was just lucky to be in a very uh, supportive environment for that. Hmm. I just feel like uh, there's no like now. I think that it's just better to use the preprints for journal clubs rather than actual already published papers. I mean, which is okay to use uh, already published papers because the more eyes that look at it, the better. I just feel like it's 
more uh, exciting to to comment right. on a preprint. <laughs> and it's also, you know, uh, it's you can provide comments and feedback before it's too late. Like that was the main point that I liked because it's like, well, right now it's not written in stone. I mean, it's it's yet you can still do something. You can still feel help helpful, right? And exactly. so exactly that was the biggest motivation and. Um, so I think it would be helpful to, um, that's why we have that request for reviewers that we're trying to figure out how, uh, not figure out, but we're going to integrate with preprint platforms, some preprint platforms in a way that you can see if the author has made that request, because there is like, I would feel even better if I knew that the author actually wanted that help. So I think, uh, those are just important things that we can do to, um, help this process. And I see, yeah. here, um, if uh, so, you can search the uh, the DOIs that we give right now are Zenodo DOIs, and you can search it on pre-review. But um, we're working on like a, a system that is like more um, uh, standardized metadata search. So uh, hopefully, there will be an easier way to search for the reviews in a new platform. Thank you so much, Daniela. Um, so now, let me. I just like. I can't, okay, sorry. Yeah. So now I give the microphone to Fabio Palmieri. Thank you, Fabio. Yeah, so uh, hi everybody. So thanks Sandra for the, um, the introduction. So, uh, so I will just give you my experience on how to set up your own journal, uh, journal club at your institution. So next slide, yeah, thanks. So, I'm um, so I joined as a bio as an ambassador since April 2019, and I was always interested in the idea to contribute to make science advanced faster by reviewing preprint in journal clubs, and also like my motivation was that when I realized that um, early career researchers don't have really training to peer review papers. So I said, okay, why not to set up a preprint journal club at my university? Next slide, please. So uh, yeah, I really used so the presentation that Daniela just presented. Next slide, please. Yeah. So as there was no journal club uh, in my university, so I was the pioneer so i just um yeah next slide please uh so because at my university so um i'm a phd uh, finishing phd student at uh, in switzerland the university of neuchatel and i'm part of two doctoral programs one that is um inter-university and one um so so they are both uh, inter-university, but like the second one, the of the University of Neuchatel is the one of, of my university. Um, so what I did was that I contacted the coordinators of both doctoral programs. And uh, so for the CUSO Microbial Sciences uh, doctoral program, um, the course project uh, was discussed at the committee uh, meeting and they all agree and the, uh, all the, com uh, the committee members were super excited uh, on the idea. And then on the doctoral program of my university, um, so they proposed me to talk about my project of doing a of setting, a, uh, setting up a, a course on reviewing preprint in preprint journal club at the um, uh, biology institute meeting. So what I did and all the professor and the members were really excited. So I've really presented how I wanted to do that. And so the professor suggested that, uh, so, at least one postdoc or professor should be present during the sessions in order to kind of uh, um, 
not really host, but like mit, uh, mitigate the discussions. And uh, you also help us in the review writing process. Next slide, please. So the first activity, so I did uh, this activity on Preprint Journal Club. Um, it was in the, on the 8th of September. So I also took the, the opportunity of this um, activity to present as a bio and preprints in general, and then introduce also what the preprint journal club is and the benefits. And then we did together uh, a preprint review. So yeah, I really had a really nice feedback on the, on the course and, and also, so we were not too many. We were like six people. Mm, so like half of them uh, didn't know what a preprint was. So I really had nice discussions um, on preprints in general. And so what I did was that I, so I shared the preprint that I chose uh, for, this first, for this first session and so ask them to, to read it. And I also set up a Google doc in order to write a collaborative um, doc for the preprint. And um, yeah, so I had the impression that, so like maybe one point is that, um, so we were all in microbiology, but yeah, really chose a preprint like in my lab uh, expertise. Oh. Like we were mostly my lab uh, were discussing, but I really tried to involve and to ping the other participants and they really um, give uh, really nice comments and suggestions for the review. Um, yeah, but then it was really nice. Um, and so I really asked um, one of my colleagues to help me to, to write this, uh, this review. Uh, yeah, so really nice experience for that. So next slide, please. Thanks. Um, yeah, so for now, so unfortunately, as I'm a finishing PhD student, uh, uh, I didn't have really the time to set up um, more about that, but I'm also organizing um, the Preprint Journal Club in, the, in my university. So when I spoke about um, that with, my, with the coordinator of the program, um, so we really decided that it will be kind of compulsory for the PhD students enrolled in the program to at least once um, take the lead, choose, choose the preprint and with a colleague to host the session uh, for, the, um, uh, for the journal club. So yeah, as I, so as I said, so work in pairs. And so I'm still in this in ongoing discussions to decide how many credits will be uh, granted for the activity in order to get more incentive also for the PhD student to, to, um, to participate. And yeah, of course, the session I did uh, in September was online, and I think with the current situation, we will keep that on online. So, yeah. And yeah, I really used also all the resources uh, provided by Pre Review, and it was really useful. So, yeah, that's all. Thanks a lot. Thank you, uh, Fabio. Uh, there is a question from, from Mirace and, and she's asking uh, whether there was something 
how did you manage to get the university on board if there was something you know that they were interested in and uh, yeah yeah uh, so i first ask my ask my professor if like she thinks it would be like a, a good idea and then i directly contacted the um, uh, coordinator of the program and also there is one member of the professor that is the director of the program and he told me yeah you should um, tell the institute committee about that and see what they what they say and yeah, they were all really all excited about that uh, like maybe one like negative comments I had but was like one professor told me, uh, do you really think um, like professors will have time to kind of help you with that because we don't have already time to, to review articles. Um, but then, and that was uh, the suggestion that we maybe can ask postdocs also to help us for that and yeah yeah i think it's it's nice that um you have somebody a little bit more experienced that can also guide the discussion and 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 guide the the reviews and also i think it's really helpful that uh you are trying that uh, this activity gives you some credit because it's a way to get people on board and and yeah, and I think it's kind of a, how would say, like, like kind of a training, right? Um, so it should be, indeed, I think it should be maybe compulsory for every graduate program, just to get some training on, on, on how to discuss and, and review papers all together. Yeah. And also one of my points that I, I also uh, mentioned when I discussed in, uh, with the committee of the Institute of uh, Biology was that like for me, I, did, I didn't see the matter of like doing many journal clubs, like specifically on one, um, like in microbiology or uh, behavior. But like, I really think that it's really useful and also interesting to have feedback from like uh, outside outside domains like and also to to get interested in uh, other research domains that ours like also to be able to yeah really critically uh, assess research that is not our own uh, research domain mm. and also, what I liked with the, the activity that I did on the, on, in September was that we were like uh, three universities um, like during this activity. And I kind of tried to also make them set up their own journal club at their university to make like a snowball effect. And maybe we will get it. So yeah, we'll see. Hello? That's cool. Hi. Yes. Oops. <laughs> yes, yes, I'm at home all day. I think we have somebody. <laughs> okay, sure. Um... Okay. <laughs> now I was going to ask Fabio, uh, what did you do with the reviews? Um, did you post them somewhere? Did you send it to the authors? So it was really. Uh unfortunate but like um so like some days after we did the call uh, i saw the article was published oh. <laughs> and yeah so i so we tried to um, like build the review together but yeah I, I don't know if it will be yeah still useful then for the authors unfortunately but Mm -hmm. But for the next sessions, are you planning to, like, what are you planning to do with the reviews, ideally? So, yeah, post them on pre-review. 
that's cool. and also I, I also um so explain that with pre-review you get so doi and then you can have a record on the reviews you you're doing so that's also really really useful for the the career and also then to be uh like chosen as a reviewer for a peer review journal yeah <laughs> Thank you so much, uh, Fabio. I don't know if uh, there is any more questions. Uh, yeah, so there are some comments from uh, Victor. He says, after publication, yeah. the peer reviews are still interesting for the readers. So, <laughs> yeah. sure. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you. Um, so now I'm gonna hand the microphone. Sorry, some, okay to uh, Sara Llorente, and she has been a part, like a participant of a preprint journal club, and we wanted to hear also from like kind of an insider's point of view. So, Sara? Okay, so hello everyone, I'm Sara, and I'm just a first year PhD student at Juan Mavagritas lab. So first I want to thank Asad Bio for organizing this useful and very inspiring event. And second, as uh, Sandra Franco has said, I'm just here to share my experience in preparing journal class. And I'm going to give just my personal opinion about why I decided to participate in a preprint journal club and what I found helpful and beneficial for me and my training and development as a researcher. So as they have said, I participated in the preprint review challenge that was hosted by Asapayo on September 22nd. And I participated with some postdoctoral colleagues from my research group. It was indeed one of my colleagues who suggested to participate, to participate in this event as a group. And what did I personally decide to take part in this event with my colleagues? Well, I'm aware of the current popularity of preprint repositories and the access to preprints, which I find very useful to be up to date of what is going on in my field of research and the latest experiments and discoveries. However, this great opportunity to have quick access to almost ongoing research comes with the challenge or need of a more critical thinking from my point of view, because uh, when I'm reading a preprint, I have the feeling that I need to be reviewing it at the same time and not just reading it, and that I need to be more skeptical. Uh, I know that this critical um, thinking so be done uh, for every paper, no matter if it's published or not, or in this journal or another. But anyway, critical thinking is an essential skill for a researcher. Um, from my point of view, preprints offer to early stage researchers as myself an excellent opportunity to train this ability, as it might be more difficult to find flows or critique published papers that have already gone through a peer review process. And apart from this, uh, what did I gain from participating in the preprint review challenge? So but apart from this training of my critical thinking, which I have already mentioned, as the aim of the event was to write comments and review and reviews on preprint, I learned how to structure my thoughts and write them down. Uh, in a logical order and um, together with my colleagues and making sure that these comments were understandable and useful for the authors of the manuscript and even for future readers that might come up with the same or similar questions. And also through this experience, I learned to identify relevant and novel aspects of a manuscript, such as how it moves the field forward or the novelty of the results or um, how it can be improved, some experiments, as has already been mentioned, that it's not just to be searching for the flaws, but also to think about how you can help the authors to, to give um, yeah, an opinion, uh, help, uh, how they can do another experiment to try to make their statement more powerful. So in conclusion, from my point of view as a PhD student, I think that including preprint journal clubs as a routine might be very useful for training the critical thinking 
in the early stage of research, uh, of a research career, and it's also a valuable training for future pre and also postdoctoral researchers, because in the future you might be eventually asked for reviewing a paper more formally for a journal. And also not to mention the benefits for the authors and future readings that we have already been mentioning in this event. So yeah, that was my opinion. So thank you for listening. And I'll be happy to take any questions if you post it in the chat or just, yeah, wherever. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, Sarah. And I completely agree with you that even though we should be kind of always um, kind of critical and skeptical when we read like any piece of uh, scientific information, it's true that we tend to believe more what is already published than uh, preprints. However, um, it's good to always keep an eye on, you know, like always not, not feel that because it's published, it's true. Um, but, but yeah, I do think that when we review uh, preprints, uh, we are more keen on spotting maybe things that we would have done maybe differently or things that maybe could, uh, you know, like experiments that maybe we could uh, suggest. Um, we are kind of more, it's like more a, a blank space. Like we feel more maybe um, confident to suggest these things uh, if we know that nobody has formally reviewed it, I guess. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think the same. <laughs> That if you see that the paper has already been published in a high impact journal, you think, oh, no, no, if I say something, it might be wrong because they have gone through a review process. So, yeah. Yeah. And I was, I wanted to ask you, like, if previously in your uh, uh, research, like with your lab, have you discussed uh, preprints as part of uh, like a journal club or as part of lab meetings or something? So indeed, uh, every week we have journal clubs and we uh, review preprints, no published papers. So um, I was kind of used to, to do reviewing preprints, but uh, we usually don't write down the comments and everything is just more like an informal discussion of the preprint in the lab. And um, I thought that this uh, event that you have to write down the comments in a structured in a structured way so it was really useful and i know that uh, before i joined the lab in some cases that they have found papers well preprints that they have a lot of comments or ways to improve the preprint they have sent the comments to the authors directly but so so yeah that's cool. Um, it actually ask, I guess, to like everyone if there are preprint journal clubs at uh, your institution, and if not, uh, if you see those uh, developing. I don't know if any, if anybody wants to jump out or, or just put it into the into the chat. Uh, personally, in my institution. Uh, there's a couple of journal clubs, but not uh, specifically preprint journal clubs. It does, I guess it does depend on, um, they don't say they allow or not allow it, allow them. I guess you just have to join those journal clubs and see whether if you go there with a preprint, what happens, right? Um, there's another question, um, like open question. What is an ideal time frame for hosting a journal club monthly? How long for each session? Maybe uh, Fabio can can also comment on, on that. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it was part of the discussions. Um, I think monthly is a good uh, time frame. Um, how long? I think it, it depends on yeah, maybe one hour or one hour and 30 minutes, maybe and like for the core discussions. And then yeah, there is still then work to do uh, outside the session in order to write. But yeah, I think. And and before, because I also joined the uh, awesome. peer review challenge, and I, I remember that it was really helpful to have um, 
like the guidelines and some some questions to guide your thinking before so when we actually came together to discuss it we had we could go uh, one question at a time and this and be more focused because if not i guess that it can take um yeah. forever <laughs> yeah indeed yeah so Jessica asked if uh, authors, should authors provide updates about where their papers are in the review process to help potential journal club reviewers? What are the pros and cons for authors and readers? I don't know if, um, I think it's, it's, I mean, I guess we normally people post their uh, manuscripts on bioarchive, like most of them, when they are at the same time maybe submitting for a for a journal. Uh, but as we have said, like even if if the paper is nearly there, nearly published, uh, I still see that there is value uh, for the uh, to review. There's a still uh, value for the people that are doing th this reviewing for the early career researchers because sometimes especially if authors uh, publish their paper in, in this kind of journals where you can also see the, the, the reviews, it might be useful to compare both and see what you spotted and what the official peer review reviewers spotted. But also, uh, as Jessica said, like it can be helpful for the authors to move their research forward. I don't know, how do you feel? Just to jump in here a little bit, I mean, I think um, there are some preprint servers that provide updates on where papers are in the review process. And I know that some journals, um, I, I'm trying to remember if it's Nature Communications had a list of preprints that were under review. Um, on one hand, I feel like there, this interacts with the concept of signaling um, what journal is considering your paper, et cetera. And it can be, you know, I think, um, you know, normally the peer review process is very private, so I can see that being kind of strange for authors to <laughs> make that public, but I can also see, you know, sometimes there's papers that get, um, you know, revised or people post them before peer review, and so, you know, for example, if there's a paper and it's six months old, is it going to come out of journal tomorrow, or are, are, have the authors not submitted? I mean, I think, you know, personally, I think that having these kind of indications, are also whether authors would be willing or interested in actively getting feedback could help, um, you know, address some of these concerns about applying efforts in in the most constructive way. Um, but yeah, I can see how this would have all kinds of weird unintended consequences as well. No, but yeah, definitely, and also like it's it can be helpful for people. Like if there was maybe attack on my archive, maybe saying uh, we request review, like. Uh, when you want to sort out which uh, preprint you want to discuss, maybe you could uh, filter by that <laughs> tag, and then you could uh, actually help somebody that wants uh, some reviews. Uh, yeah, that that could be. Could, I think that could be really helpful. Uh, Carrie asked, uh, "How how many people for a good discussion?" And I think that's kind of tricky because yeah you don't want too few or too many um how many people were there in your um preprint journal club fabio uh i think we were we were five if i remember well or, yeah five, five. yeah okay. and that was a good number yeah but then i i think then it, it depends um yeah, like if there are maybe like two people that are really talking, then it might be too few. Yeah. How, how many people were uh, were in the in the peer review challenge, uh, Sarah? How many people were was in your session? So it was me plus three postdoc on my lab. Okay. For, okay. And how do you, like do you feel it was a like a good number? Yeah, I think it was good because uh, the four of us have the opportunity to talk because I think that if it's too big, sometimes people might be more like silent and yeah. So I think yeah. that, yeah, that number was good. 
Yeah, in my session, we were there was two of us. <laughs> so we were like, maybe we discuss it for 30 minutes or so, but then we kind of ran out of <laughs> like ideas. We already discussed uh, all the points that we had. So maybe I think two can be a little bit like a small number, even though I see that some says that uh, pre-review ha have participated in preprint journal clubs where ha there has been just two people and they had like a lot of opportunity to discuss, like to go really deep into the details. So yeah, I guess uh, I guess all formats can work probably. Uh, yeah. So I just, just to be mindful for the time, um, I think that Irache uh, has a couple of updates and I'm just gonna uh, hand her the virtual microphone. Um, yeah, so Irache. Thank you. And if I can have the last slide, please. Sure. Um, so, well, first of all, thank you to uh, you, Sandra, for sharing this call today and to all of the speakers for sharing your experience. I found it really interesting to hear, you know, how the different modalities and how all the tips as to how to get started and um, run preprint journal clubs. Um, I just wanted to give an update about an event that Ace of Bayer is running, and I'm very pleased that Daniela mentioned it earlier because she has nicely said that. <laughs> the space for this. Uh, the Ace of Valle is running a preprint curation and review design sprint, which is happening in two sessions. The first one is next week on November 13, uh, with a kickoff event. Um, essentially what we called for were suggestions and ideas as to how we can incentivize preprint commentary and review. And uh, we are very excited to say that we had 21 proposals. So the, the link to the event uh, uh, is there, it's on our website. You can review all of the proposals, do have a look and see if you find a few things that you hopefully like from that and uh, would be happy to comment on. Something that I want to be clear on is that we welcome participation at the events, even if you haven't submitted a proposal, we are hoping to have uh, participants again, share their ideas about the projects that have been submitted. Um, and also one of the goals of having two sessions is that the, the, those who are proposing can interact with the participants and get some feedback with which they can refine their project. So essentially you're welcome to attend even if you didn't submit a proposal. Uh, registration details on the website and then the second event is on December the 3rd. Uh, where there will be a presentation uh, of the refined projects and there will be some awards for the best uh, suggestions as per the judges. So more information there. And I hope to see some of you at the events. Um, and I think with that, uh, that was it for today. Do keep in touch again through Twitter or if you're part of the community through Slack and the next community call will be probably now in the new year. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for speaking today and for attending today. And I hope you have a nice rest of the day. Thank you. Bye. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye.